Okay, hello all you crazy people out there. My name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games and welcome back to 3D Games and Game Maker Studio 2. So today's video is hopefully not going to be too complex or fancy or anything like that, but it is going to be an answer to something that some people occasionally ask about, which is using surfaces in 3D. It is very possible to use a surface in 3D in Game Maker, but there are a couple pitfalls that sometimes need to be addressed. I've made many videos on 3D in Game Maker, as uh, you probably know. I've also made a couple of videos on using surfaces in the past. I'll have links to them popping out of the screen and in the video description and all that fun stuff if you want to go see them. This here is uh, is my Toon Shader demo. This is basically the final product of the Toon Shader minus all of the stuff with the outline uh, that I was messing with in, in the last uh, 3D video. Um, if you look at the code, I've got all the rock positions down here. I've also got surface underscore extra still uh, created in the create event. I'll be leaving that there because we'll be using a surface anyway. Um, the tune shader itself is still here, but, um, we're not really doing anything with the, uh, with the normal rendered. We're not really doing anything with that. We're not passing it through the Sobel outline filter in the, uh, in the draw GUI event to draw the outline on the screen. I'm just doing that for simplicity right now, since it's not really going to be important to this video. I don't want to have it there. So let's start with, uh, with drawing a 3D scene to a surface. Uh, drawing a 3D scene to a surface is pretty much the same as drawing anything else to a surface, but... Uh, there is one thing that you have to be careful for, uh, be careful with. So, up here, uh, the surface is being erased every uh, every time the draw event is run, which is okay. Uh, we are using draw clear uh, with the uh, the black color, a solid black color on the surface every time, and that is going to make sure that there is nothing from the previous frame on it. Um, if you don't ever, uh, if you don't ever reset the target uh, when at the beginning here, when you uh, when you clear the surface, when you clear surface extra. And then uh, you instead reset the target at the end, because if you don't do that, the, the game will complain that there is an unbalanced surface stack and um, it'll crash rather rudely. Um, let's see, what did I do? This will work fine. Uh, this will work fine. When you draw the application surface on the, uh, on the draw GUI event or in the post draw event or whichever you prefer, uh, you will see that there is nothing on it. This is just going to be a black screen with a little bit of user interface at the top. Uh, you can see there's nothing here. If instead I were to draw surface underscore extra in the uh, in the draw surface function, you will see that the world is being drawn onto that instead. Uh, so we are drawing onto our own surface instead of the application surface. If I were to minimize the game as always, and you try to bring it back, the game would crash because I'm not checking to see if the surface exists, which is something that you should always do, but I'm not going to do that here in this game just to save time. Um, because I have I have uh, ranted on that point in many other videos, and I don't need to do it again. So this works. Drawing onto the um, drawing onto the other surface works uh, as long as you use surface set target and surface reset target at the appropriate points in the game. Now, if instead I'm going to uh, I'm going to move this code down here. If instead you try to set the um, set the surface in 3D after the camera code. Has, uh, has been run after the projection matrix has been set, after the view matrix has been set, and after the camera apply has been called. Instead, we are going to not really have what we want to see happening happening. Uh, you see, we are looking at Link from the bottom. We are looking at the rocks from the bottom. When I move the mouse, we're not looking around. There is no mouse look or anything like that. Uh, you can't see this, but I'm hitting WASD on the keyboard, and we are not actually moving around. So what's happening here is when you set a surface in 3D, and really when you set the surface anywhere where you're using the camera functions, but especially when you set a surface using 3D, uh, you need to apply the camera. You need to use camera apply and uh, set the camera's view and projection matrices after you say surface set target, because otherwise what's happening is we are, uh, we are basically looking at the surface, the surface, the projection that is being used on the surface is the default game maker projection. So wherever, um, whatever all these things in the room are, that's not the room. Where's the room? room. Um, we are basically using the, the, uh, the default game maker camera when you, we are drawing the scene and we are looking uh, down or in this case up from below uh, on the room as if we were using a regular 2D projection. Uh, the only difference is that all of the uh, all of the vertex buffers and everything are being um, are being drawn so there is some amount of 3D depth going on there but regardless um, the cameras are not working uh, because the cameras matrices have not been set so if I, uh, if I say camera apply after 
saying surface set target, then this should bring everything back and we should have our uh, regular 3D projection again. Nope, do I have to, uh, do I have to do the whole thing? Let's try doing the whole thing. All right, here we go, now it's back. Uh, we have to set the camera's view and projection matrices after setting the surface target so that we know what we're rendering with on the surface. Okay, that's pretty good. Uh, this is, um, there's not much more to this uh, in case you want to use a, um, a secondary surface for anything. Of course, you can also use multiple render targets. Um, you can draw onto the application surface primarily without saying surface set target. And then you can, um, you can just draw onto the application surface and set whatever other surfaces you want as uh, other render targets. Let's see, let's move this back to the top of the, um, to the top of the draw event. Let's get rid of this duplicated camera code. I'll just leave a comment. Leave a comment there, uh, because, uh, anyone who's, uh, anyone who looks at this code in the GitHub repository will, will probably want to know that. So that's half of it. So there's something else I want to talk about in this video, and that is that in the past I've talked about a function called surface get texture, and um, I made a video on this a while ago uh, using surfaces as textures. I'll have a link to that in all of the places you would expect to find a link to that as well. This boils down to using a surface as a texture in 3D or in otherwise in, in 2D Game Maker. Uh, you can use surfaces as textures. But there's a bit of fun to be had when it comes to drawing a surface that you have uh, rendered a 3D image onto. Uh, so if you're if you're using this surface, if you're drawing the 3D world onto the surface, surface underscore extra, and let's say you want to um, let's say you want to use this as a texture in the world. This can be a, this can be a bit of fun. This is generally how you might do something like a surveillance camera. If you want to uh, if you want to create a portal system or something like that, I've had a couple of people in the comments uh, asking about portal systems and how to render those. Uh, you can use um, you can use a surface that you have drawn a 3D camera onto, and then use that as a texture in the world to draw your portals or your surveillance cameras or something. So let's start with uh, let's start with something simple: surface get texture texture surface extra. Um, this is actually not going to work because we are currently rendering to the surface and trying to draw to the surface while rendering to it is not going to uh, is not going to be a fun time. The game is going to break. Ooh. Okay, so it actually doesn't crash with an error message, but it um it just it just renders the default texture and it it throws out a complaint uh, message in the console down here, informing us that we are trying to set a texture that is also bound as depth buffer. In other words, we're trying to draw to it, and that's uh, that's not actually working. So instead, let's uh, take a take another step back, and I'm going to call this surface extra copy, and that's going to be uh, that's going to be the same thing. It's going to be the same dimensions as surface underscore extra, except the only difference is that once, once we are finished drawing the surface, uh, once we are finished drawing to the surface, I should say, uh, we will say surface copy, and the um, let's see, the destination is going to be surface extra copy. That's the one that we just created in the create event over here. The x is going to be zero, the y is going to be zero, and the source is going to be surface extra, which is the one that we're drawing. It's uh, it's the one that we're drawing to. And instead of uh, using surface underscore extra uh, as the floor, we are going to use surface extra copy, which is just going to be the contents of that surface in the previous frame. Uh, this does mean that there will be a one frame delay between, um, oh my god, this is, uh, this, this looks amazing. Uh, there will be a one frame delay between when uh, the scene is drawn and when it actually ends up on the floor, but it's, um, it will be it will be usable, and you can see that every everything you see on the screen is also being used as the texture on the floor. That's uh don't look at this for too long. I'm all right. I I feel like I'm looking through a kaleidoscope or one of those little fly eye uh, lenses or something like that. It's oddly uh it's oddly it's I can't explain why I like this, but I do. Anyway. So that's just a quick test to to show that you can indeed do this. I'm going to try and make something a little bit more uh, a little more a, a little bit more interesting now, and that is going to be something like a a wall or a screen. Do I still have a um? Uh, where was it? One way wall. 
Okay, that's still in this, uh, that's still in the tutorial project files. Let me open this. Um, I just want to make sure that it is what I think it is. If I... Okay. It's, it's one-sided because, um... It's one-sided because I believe when I made that video which in which this was used, backface culling was turned off, so it didn't matter. But let me just uh, let me just make this double-sided so there's a uh, triangles on both sides, and I'm going to set that color to to white, 100% uh, white, just to make sure that it is what I think. Uh, let's load it into the game. Uh, I'm going to call it something like uh, VB underscore screen equals load model. What was it called? One way wall dot D3D. Let's just uh, so that I spell it right, copy and paste the file name. We're going to load one way wall. And somewhere, let's uh, actually. Let's go back to drawing the floor with the grass sprite. And we can say, um, let's just say bef after the grass is drawn. Okay, fine. After the grass is drawn, vertex um, submit vb uh, screen, as I called it, pr triangle list, and the texture is going to be surface get texture surface extra copy. And just to put this somewhere in the world, let's um let's use some, let's use some matrices. Let's use some matrices to transform this matrix set. Matrix world, matrix build. Um, the transform can be. Let's make it. Let's let's put it at the end of the world. Uh, room width, room height, zero. Uh, rotation is going to be zero zero zero. Uh, scale one 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 is fine. And at the end, when we're done with that. Uh, we can reset the transform using the identity matrix. Okay. This should work. Um, I'm not sure if it'll be exactly where I think it is in the world. Okay, it's also upside down. Um, I believe that's because of the texture coordinates in the model. So let me just flip the texture coordinates the other way around in the model. Uh, but you can see that already this is working. And also, let's uh, let's actually make it bigger. Let's actually make the uh, the screen bigger. Uh, let me just open this up. And I can... Let's scale this up by a factor of four, because this is actually a lot smaller than I remember it being. I might have... Um, I might have been scaling it with with matrix transforms in the original video that I used it in. And we can... Um, simply invert the texture coordinates by dragging them and moving them upside down like this. Okay. So now when I run the game, we should have a uh, we should have something that is passably acceptable as like a uh, a TV screen or something like that, a surveillance camera. All right, that's cool. It is um it is surfaces all the way down or something like that. All right. I I, I keep wanting to say the original quote turtles all the way down was said by was attributed to uh, Richard Feynman because it sounds like something Richard Feynman would say except I don't, I don't think it actually was. All right. It also appears to be a mirror backwards. But again, uh, nothing a little bit of a a little bit of texture coordinates can't fix. All right. That's interesting. Um if you want a uh if you want to have something like a camera, a surveillance camera that's like sitting on the wall, uh, it may help to render the scene actually twice through two cameras. In which case, I am going to take this entire uh, rendering operation, this entire drawing operation, and I am going to... Let's see, it should be down to there. Uh, put it in its own function. I'm going to create myself a script. Uh, SCR draw all the stuff. And... Uh, we're going to call that SCR, draw all the stuff. And let me just indent this properly because bad indentation annoys me. Even though it really shouldn't. It just looks wrong. Is that it? That's the end of it. 
All right, now it's indented properly. I'm going to, instead of actually drawing everything directly in the camera's draw event, I am going to uh, say, uh, draw all the stuff. And also this needs to be there. Actually, no, hang on, wait. All right, so the, uh, I am not going to put the camera matrix setting. I'm not going to put the camera matrix setting in that script. Uh, instead, we're going to set the camera's uh, projection and view matrix and everything. And then we're going to call draw all the stuff. And the screen is going to look as it did before. Uh, surface TV screen and all. And uh, we, have, we, uh, we have Link being drawn with his little tunification shader and all the rocks and everything else. And now I'm going to define... I'm also going to not surface set target for now. Uh, first, I'm going to draw this onto the application surface. Uh, draw surface, application surface. Okay, and what else do I want to do? So let's keep things a little bit simple. And if you remember in the very first video, I, uh, I first tested out the camera projection by setting X from, Y from, and Z from, X, X2, Y2, and Z2 to uh, basically the corners of the room. So let's do that again. Um, matrix build look at is going to start at zero, zero, and I, I want to say it was about 100, 200 units in the air. Uh, X2 is room width, Y2 is room height, and Z2 is zero. So we are going to be positioned somewhere in the air around the origin of the room, and we're going to be looking diagonally at the other corner. Uh, zero, zero, one, those are fine for the up vector. Uh, the projection matrix is fine for the projection matrix. Nine to 60, when to get width, when to get height, and um, the clipping planes. And then you uh, then you set these. Then you apply the uh, apply the camera settings. And then we're going to say script underscore draw all the stuff again. And this is going to cause. Uh, you know what is um draw clear C black. I'm going to want that, aren't I? Uh, surface set target, and then uh, immediately clear it to black. Okay, here we go. So this is going to cause uh, the surface that's being rendered onto this uh, this TV screen thing over here to appear as if it's got a bird's eye view of being up there in the corner where my mouse cursor is. And uh, it's looking down here to where I'm standing right now. Uh, if my player object actually had a model that was being rendered at any point, uh, you would see me in the corner of the screen too. Um, in the, uh, in the opposite corner of the room, you would see like my little guy walking around or more likely given my 3D modeling skills, like a box uh, that's just sliding around on the floor or something like that. But I do not have a player model, so you can't see me. Um, this, is a, uh, this is a rudimentary surveillance camera or anything else you might want to draw in, in 3D on something, some other object in the game, uh, a portal or something. If you've ever wanted to do such a thing, uh, here's how. A quick note is that, again, this is mirrored right to left because the UV coordinates of the of the plane that I made in Model Creator for Game Maker are a little bit weird, apparently. Uh, so it looks like it looks like the camera is looking at this side of Link, um, but as you can see by the uh, as you can see by the angle of the lighting, we are indeed standing on the side that's uh, that's on the far corner of the room and looking at and looking at this corner of the room. So a small note, uh, because there is logic in the draw event, which it is. Somewhat discards that you uh, that you don't actually have. Uh, if I if I press Q and E to rotate Link, uh, as I had to test the lighting in the Tune Shader videos, you will notice he is rotating faster than he did in those videos, and that is because the code that checks to see if you're holding down the keys and whether or not you should rotate Link, is um is being it's being run twice uh, because this function is run twice, uh, in the regular drawing and on the uh, on the surveillance camera drawing as I'm going to call it. If I were to instead move this code to, for example, the step event uh, and, uh, and do that here instead, uh, Link will be rotating at the original speed, so uh, two degrees per frame. Uh, he, is, uh, he is no longer spinning very, very fast like, like, like a, a planet Jupiter and uh, getting a little bit, a little bit dizzy. Uh, that is, uh, if you've ever heard people tell you, tell you not to put game logic uh, like this in the draw event, that's why. Because if you have the draw event running more than once, either for something like this or because you have multiple views, then the game logic is going to be running more than once and you'll suddenly uh, find everything in the world is, uh, is moving like twice as fast as it's supposed to or whatever. Uh, there's a bit of a misconception that code that happens in the draw event is slower than code that happens everywhere else. Uh, that is not true. Please stop saying that. It is not true. 
Uh, but there are other reasons you may want to not have uh, game logic like that in the draw event, some of which you you saw right now in action. Okay. Again, this is a this is a short video. It is more on the not serious side. Uh, it's something that's a little bit more fun than complicated. None of this is a uh, none of this is anything that hasn't been seen before, except for a. Uh, except for the little note about making sure you apply the camera matrices after you set the surface target. I'm going to cut it off here. Hopefully this is a, a bit of a shorter video. So if you want the code for this, uh, obviously there will be a link to a GitHub repository where you can find this in the video description. If you want to contribute towards these videos being made because you think they are cool and, and worth, um, words, uh, worth giving money to, uh, there will be links to that in all the usual places as well. Otherwise, I try to post about two of these videos a week one of these tutorial tutorials and one let's make a tower defense game. So if you want to see more of that, definitely subscribe. Otherwise, I hope you found that interesting and I will see you all later. Special thanks to Emily Koyo, Posho, Edward Holt, and Zenith for supporting these videos. If you want your name in the credits or to hear yourself shouted out at the end, head on over to the Patreon page in the video description to join the fun.